what are we doing over here? Um, you talking about my work? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're finishing up an order right now. We've got about 200 CDs and about 100 DVDs and I'm almost done. CDs and DVDs. There goes Emmanuel over there sneaking by. <laughs> and the printer's going here. Yeah. Where is going? DVD print. DVD print going over here. Proxy's going over here on this computer, which is gonna be editing the real estate video that we just shot. This computer has a i5 4590 CPU, 3.3 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM. It's not super fast, but it gets the job done. So typically what we do is we use this computer um, to house all the files. And then once we get ready to start the editing process, everything gets dumped into here, into a timeline. And so now we can use this timeline here just to do the preliminary edit. Once we get the first round of editing done, this whole workflow project folder will go over to my computer and that's where I handle all the color grading and the rest of the, uh, you know, the final stage of the, the edit. So that's what we're gonna be doing today or tomorrow at some point. What's going on, man? It's Jesse here, man. Once again, it's January 7th, man. It's uh, Monday, man. How are y'all doing out there, man? God bless you guys. Um, as you saw, we've been uh, working on a few little projects around the house and um, just kind of winding down, man. We just had a, a day uh, running around with the family, taking care of a few projects here at the house. Uh, last night, I wrapped up the, the re-edit on a a real estate shoot that I needed to basically they wanted the audio to be replaced and so I did all of that last night I was on a Facebook live and an Instagram live and on each one of those uh, live vid videos I had someone asking me what's a good camera to get started with to shoot music videos and maybe do like some photography stuff and so then today I get a text message from someone else uh, you know asking me the same question, you know, like hey, what's a good camera to get started with mainly whenever somebody asks me that question There's always like a few things. I always ask, you know for number one What, what are you going to use it for? Is it going to be just strictly for videos? Or is it going to be for photos and video as well? That's the second question Are you going to plan to use it for videos? And then the third question, you know, is also like what kind of budget do you have? And so I had made the recommendation about this camera that I'm using right now, which is the Sony NEX 5T. So I've been pointing people to that camera. This camera is an older model, so they they basically do not make these because every year they were coming out with a new one. It's got the flip screen like you see here. I'm actually using a, a lav mic today and recording my audio separately uh, so that it's a little bit better. But like this camera is good for just like, you know, um, getting, you know, some standard footage for, you know, uh, running around, you know, family stuff. Um, I don't know that I would do a whole lot of professional work with it. I definitely wouldn't do anything big like commercial, but if you can get things well lit and with a good lens, you could put out some very basic uh, music videos uh, just to show that they can be done with a cheaper camera like that just to get started. So like if you wanted to shoot your own music videos, you could probably use the Sony NEX 5T. Since it's discontinued, the new model that you would have to look into if you wanted to buy a new one is the Sony A5100. Um, but what I wanted to talk about, man, is more like um, the question that keeps coming up about you know, what do you think about these new camera that came out? You know, should I upgrade my camera? It's a question that I've been asking myself a lot too. Um, last year, the, the Sony a7 III came out, which was probably the camera of the year. Uh, that camera has basically almost everything you, that you would want except for the, the tilting flip out screen so that you can vlog with it. But other than that, it's got the Sony autofocus, it's got the Sony color profiles, it's got S-Log in it. You know, and it was only $2,000, plus it's a full frame, um, so it can take excellent pictures. 
So if you're looking for something that shoots 4K and does, you know, very good photos, the a7 III is really like a hard camera to beat for a $2,000 price point. The downside of that thing is what's been keeping me from getting it is you basically need full frame lenses to go on that camera now. And I don't have any full frame lenses. I only have APS-C lenses. So if I were to switch to a Sony a7 III right now um, and I sold all of my camera uh, and lenses, all my lenses and my camera, my a6300 included, and all my lenses, my MC11 adapter, you know, the other lenses, I would probably walk away with somewhere like around anywhere from twelve to fifteen hundred dollars depending on how bad i wanted to sell it that's not that's barely enough for the camera you know you the camera's going to run you two thousand dollars um so then you got to start thinking about what lenses am i going to get well in the full frame sony line you don't really have a whole lot of uh, you know inexpensive options you got you know you have like a 24 to 70 f4 for like a thousand dollars um you know if you want to do like real estate stuff with it you still might have to get like a 10 to 18 i've heard people recommend a 10 to 18 on an a7 III. you got to shoot it in crop mode uh just to get you know a, a decent lens and in that one's like 800 dollars. you know for a 10 to 18 millimeter you're not going to use that to shoot music videos or you know like any kind of documentary stuff you're still going to need at least a 24 to 70. um the the g master is like two thousand dollars you know, so I mean, for me to switch right now, I just can't justify it financially. I can't justify it. I don't, I don't have that kind of money uh, stored up for a, a camera upgrade, and I and I don't really see myself spending that much money. Um, and so, the other option that I've been contemplating was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which is the new um, Blackmagic camera that just came out. You know, there, there's been a lot of people talking about how that camera has bugs in it, you know, because they, they people had have had videos that they show where they had a bad model where the screen, you know, stopped working on it, you know, after just like five minutes. Um, there's still a heavy issue with the battery life. And then you start, start, you're talking about the video codecs that it uses. Uh, people are saying how much storage it takes just to get, you know, just to do projects on that, you know? And so it had me thinking about maybe going over to like a GH5 model. Uh, I had a GH4, I had a Panasonic G7. Those were both great cameras. I liked them, I liked them both a lot. Um, I didn't really have any problem with them other than the fact that I wanted something uh, with a little better um, slow motion. Um, and I wanted something with a better picture profile. And those were the two main reasons why I switched from Panasonic to the Sony. Now I'm in a position where I'm kind of thinking about what well, should I upgrade to the a7 III. And uh, the more I keep thinking about it, man, the more I just feel like, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with what I have. You know, what I have is working for me, it's working well. If I really wanted to make a push to do anything, it would be to get more involved in photography. Uh, it's, a, it's a craft that I'm learning. Um, it's something that I don't really take to like uh, like as my first option. I, I enjoy filming much more than I do taking photos. And so that's one key reason why I don't really feel like I need to upgrade to a full frame camera, at least not right now. Anyway, man, um, so I kind of said all of that to talk about and say this, you know, if you're contemplating getting a camera, you got to ask yourself those three questions. You know, what are you going to use it for? Are you going to use it for photo? Are you gonna use it for video or do you plan to use it for both? And then the other big question, you know, besides those two is, is um, what is your budget? What do you plan to spend? And if you, if you, have, if you have the money to, to be able to invest into um, a good camera and a good lenses, I would say try to spend your money evenly. Buy a camera body with a lens that costs around about the same price. Um, my, my Sony a6300, when I bought it about a year and a half ago, cost me about six or 700, it was about, I think 750 or $800. Um, but I got it with a speed booster. And uh, I had already had the Sigma 18 to 35, 
which I also paid like $600 for. And with the uh, MC11 adapter for Sigma, that lens combo would cost me like right around $800. So my camera body is about $800 and my lens combo with the adapter is about $800. Um, and I think with that, you, you'll know that you're going to get a good uh, image. You'll get your best image if you can buy a camera and a lens that are about the same for each. Um, if you get a $500 camera, you should probably be looking for around about a $500 lens. Um, you know, like for me, I had this $150 camera and I'm using, you know, a little hundred dollar lens but I also have the, the the 50 millimeter which is a two hundred dollar lens um, that I primarily use on it it doesn't make sense to have the Sigma 18 to 35 that big old giant lens very sharp lens and put that on a hundred fifty dollar camera body or two hundred dollar camera body it's a, it's a six to eight hundred dollar lens combo um, so that's kind of over overkill for this camera you know but if you had like an a6000 which is about um, you know a four or five hundred maybe six hundred dollar camera if you buy it new, and you put that lens on it, you will get excellent results. Um, same thing like if you go with a Canon, it doesn't have, just have to be Sony. I'm just relating it to Sony. But if you went with a Canon, if you get a T4i or T5i, I think they're up to like T6i, T7. But if you get one of those cameras, then you should probably be looking at getting you know, a lens that's, you know, like the Sigma 18 to 35 is a great lens. I like that for APS-C cameras. Um, and so the Sony a7 III, if you're going to spend about $2,000 on the camera, why would you put a $200 lens on a $2,000 camera? Your image output, because it's going to be limited by that, what on the capabilities of that, that's in that $200 lens. You know, so to get your ideal results, you would need to probably spend about two thousand dollars on a lens, and they do go up that high. You know, like I say, the twenty-four to seventy G Master on, on, from Sony is a f two point eight, and that lens is is like right around two thousand or twenty-one hundred dollars. Um, but with that camera and that lens, that's an amazing combination. I think you can get great, great results. But with what I have right now, with it being like a third of the price of that. Um, with my, my combo with my lens and my camera, I think I'm getting pretty close to what I would get with that without having to spend the extra money. Another key thing when you're buying a camera is when you put the videos out, who do you plan to watch it? Where do you plan to post these videos or where do you plan? How do you plan to deliver these videos? Is it going to go on a, a TV network? You know, is it going to be on a TV network where you need to have a certain codec? Are you going to put this on like Netflix or Pureflix or something where they require, you know, a 25 mega, 25 uh, megabit codec minimum um, and certain color profiles and, you know, certain, you know, Rec 709 colors and stuff like that? Is that going to be something that they require? Because you have to look at that kind of stuff because that's going to determine how much you should spend and what kind of camera you should get so those are the kind of things you got to consider you know if it's just for you and you just want to get some behind the scenes when you go to an event or a birthday party or some family stuff or a church service or something you just want to kind of get some like even just some vlog stuff like this you know um invest money in the lenses man and make sure you have good audio that's another good thing to 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 point out too if you're going to be doing these kind of things make sure you at least have some decent audio i think between having you know a good camera you know instead of spending all your money on the best camera or the most expensive camera you know buy you something that you can get a good camera and a good lens and spend a little money on some audio um, to make sure that you uh, have have a good sound coming in from you know from your voices when you're talking or whatever you need to do uh those are just a couple things i wanted to share on this blog today man i hope y'all have learned something out of this i hope y'all you know kind of are enjoying the content man uh do me a favor man don't forget to subscribe to this channel man um i'm gonna be having another vlog uh to coming tomorrow and then thursday i'm gonna be going out to a video shoot in colleen which is about two hours south of here and so we're going to be driving out there and I'm uh, looking to see who I'm going to bring with me on that uh, trip so that I can get some help, uh, not only with the driving, because it's like 
four hours of driving plus I got to shoot the video so I'd rather not drive myself down there and shoot the video and then drive myself back but we'll see how it works out man you know God's gonna work it out um, again I appreciate all y'all support man there were all your feedback and everything is much appreciated man again subscribe to the channel like this video and if you think anybody could use some of this information in it share it with somebody you think might you know benefit from uh, the things that we share today man and so until tomorrow I'll talk to you soon. God bless.